have discussed that uh, we can do testing of hypothesis problems for situations such as testing for goodness of fit that means when a data set is given to us we want to check from which particular distribution it has come from uh, so for this situation we have given a chi square test for goodness of fit um, similarly there is another situation where we have the data uh, of the type which is categorical and we want to test whether the categories are independent so this topic we called as testing for independence testing for independence in r by c contingency tables so uh, yesterday i mentioned that we may have r categories distributed in the rows and c categories which are represented in the columns we have observed frequencies oijs corresponding to ijth cell and uh, on the basis of this we want to test whether the two categories are independent let me explain this through an example here so the problem is posed as follows so a state is introducing three types of pension plans so in the plan 1 the investment of the pension fund will be in risk category shares in plan 2 this is balanced investment and plan 3 is say for safe investment now whether the employees preferences are affected by their hierarchical structure in the organization that is what we have to check so the regularity regular regulatory body wants to know whether the choice of pension plan is independent of the level of employees so a random sample of 500 implies is taken and we observe the following data so the choice of pension plans we represent in the columns that is plan 1 plan 2 and plan 3 and here we <laughs> give imply status say so we have upper level middle level and say lower level for the time being let me concentrate only suppose upper level and middle level here and the data of 500 is distributed as 160 upper level implies give preference to pension plan 1 140 give to pension plan 2 and 40 give to pension plan 3 in the middle level 40 give preference to pension plan 1 60 to 2 and 60 to 3 so if we calculate the row and column totals 
they turn out to be 200, 200 and 100 and here it is 340, 160. Now we want to test whether the choice of pension plan is independent of the employee status. So for this, this is a <coughs> 2 by 3 contingency table, this is a 2 by 3 contingency table. So the values of the EIJs they are calculated by R i into C dot j divided by n. Now here you see the row totals that is R 1 dot, R 2 dot, this is C dot 1, C dot 2, C dot 3. They are given to us, so easily we can calculate say E 1 1. So, E 1 1 will be R 1 dot into C dot 1 by N. Now, in this particular case, it is 340 into 200 divided by 500. This value turns out to be 136. So, we can write these values here. Similarly, if I want to calculate E 1 2, E 1 2 is R 1 dot into C dot 2 divided by N that is equal to 340 into 200 divided by 500 that is again 136. Similarly, we can calculate E13 that is R1 dot into C dot 3 divided by N that is equal to 340 into 100 divided by 500 that is equal to 68. So, this value is 68. In a similar way, we can calculate the value corresponding to E21. So, E21 will be R2 dot into C dot 1 divided by N that is equal to 160 into 200 divided by 500 that is equal to 64. E 2 2 that will be equal to R 2 dot into C dot 2 by N that is equal to 160 into 200 divided by 500 that is again 64 and E 2 3 that is equal to R 2 dot into C dot 3 divided by N that is equal to 160 into 200 divided by 500 that is equal to 32. So, we can complete this uh, table of EIJs here. So, this is 64, this is 64, this is 32. Now, our formula for the W is sigma of OIJ minus EIJ square divided by EIJ. <coughs> so, this differences can be calculated. So, for example, the first term is 160 minus 136 that is 24 square divided by 136. Again, similar term here this will become 4 square by 136, here it is 28 square by 30 by 68 and like that. So, we can calculate these terms, the overall W turns out to be 49.63. Now, here the calculated value of the chi square statistic will be on r minus 1 c minus 1 degrees of freedom. Now, here 2 rows are there and 3 columns are there. So, this becomes chi square 2 and we look at say 0 0.05 etcetera, then this is giving the value 5.99, which is much smaller. Actually, we can calculate at a very uh, small level of uh, significance and this value will be still be larger. So, H naught is rejected. What is H naught? H naught is the hypothesis that the row categories and the column categories are independent. That is, H naught is rejected. That means, the employee 
status affects the choice of pension plan. There is another application of uh, the chi-square test. In the contingency table, we have seen that we took a total sample of size n and uh, then we saw the actual classification in the RC categories. But sometimes, we may fix the strata. For example, we may take a fixed number from upper income group upper level implies we may take a fixed sample size from middle uh, strata. So, that means basically we are doing the stratification of the population and then we take the sample and we want to see whether the responses of the different strata are homogeneous. So, in place of independence this is termed as test of homogeneity in R by C contingency tables. So, in this case, we firstly stratify the population in say R or C categories and then we take samples of fixed sizes from each of the categories and see their classification with respect to other categories. We want to test whether responses are homogeneous. Now, you see the sampling condition has been slightly modified. In the earlier case, we took full sample size and uh, that means, for the full population we take a sample and then we see that to which i j s cell they fall. Now, here either the row sums or the column sums are fixed and then we see that what is the frequency of each cell in each row or each column. So, the situation is slightly different, but the test of chi square goodness or fit which we have given for independence the same test is valid here also. Let me give this uh, through an example. So, a new product is introduced in the market and now we want to see whether it has the same level of effect in different towns of the country or different regions of the state or different areas of the city. So, in this particular case we consider the uh, response to the product in three different cities. That means, the uh, customer or you can say the responder must have already purchased the product or he might have heard about the product, but not purchased or he might not have heard the product. So, the responses are based on a survey. Now, here what we do? We fix a number of respondents in each city rather than we merge the data of the three cities and then taking a random sample. From each city we take a fixed sample size. So, let me present the data in the following form that so we have city 1 city 2 and city 3 we fix that 
we are taking 200 respondents from city 1, we are taking 150 respondents from city 2 and we are taking 300 respondents from city 3. This choice of the numbers may depend upon various factors, for example, the resources of the surveyor, the size of the city, for example, city 3 may be a much larger town compared to city 2 and city 1 may be somewhere in the middle as uh, far as the population are concerned or one may look at the consumption levels in different cities based on that one may see such things. The total sample size from each strata may be decided on the basis of that. The responses are as follows. So, the respondent might never have heard of the product, heard but did not buy or he might have bought at least once. So, the following observed data is there 36, 55, 109. 45, 56, 49, <coughs> 54, 78 and 168. Now, to test whether the responses are homogeneous, against the hypothesis they are not homogeneous. We apply the same test chi square test that is double summation O i j minus E i j square by E i j. So, we will calculate the column sums this is 135, 189, 326 the total sample size is 650. So, based on this we can calculate like 200 into 135 divided by 165 that is say 41.54, 200 into 189 divided by 650 that is say 58.15 and so on 100.31, 31.15, 43.62, 75.23, 62.31, 87.23, 150.46. So, based on these calculations of OIJs and EIJs, we can evaluate this W and it turns out to be 24.58. Now, if we look at chi square value, here the degrees of freedom will be 3 minus 1 into 3 minus 1 that is 4. Suppose we take at 5 percent level of significance, this value is 9.49. Naturally, you can see that W is much larger than this. So, we conclude that H naught is rejected that means responses are not homogeneous. So, you can see here that this chi square test for goodness of fit is applicable in various situations. We are able to test for goodness of fit that means whether the given data fits a given distribution we can test for independence of the two types of classifications in a contingency table. We may test for the pre, uh, homogeneity of the responses in a contingency table situation. So, there are various applications. Let me, uh, we will come back to this again. Firstly, let me introduce two further measures of uh, correlation. Earlier, we have seen the Carl Pearson measure of correlation, uh, which is calculated as covariance divided by the standard deviations of the two variables. Now, 
this measure of uh, Carl Pearson, it is completely dependent upon the numerical observations of the variables concerned. For example, we may be looking at the relationship between the heights of uh, say parents with the heights of the children. We may be concerned with the expenditure on the health care by families uh, corresponding to their per capita income etcetera. So, here actual measurements are required, but there are many situations in real life where the numerical values of the data are not very important. We may be simply concerned with say ranks of the values or we may be concerned about the increasing or decreasing trend of the values. Uh, for example, two judges give ranks to a set of participants in a certain competition. So, now they are not telling that for example, it could be a selection procedure. So, in a selection procedure suppose 10 candidates are there and there are two judges. So, judge 1 and judge 2. Now, we have say candidates here say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So, rather than giving the scores, their ranks are mentioned. For example, judge 1, he ranks the candidate number say 4 as 1, whereas judge 2 ranks say candidate number say 6 as 1. Likewise, they give ranks to all the candidates the candidate number 6 may be ranked 2 here, the candidate number 3 may be ranked 3, the candidate number 3 may be ranked 2 by this and this may be ranked 3, the candidate number 1 may be ranked 4 by say both of them, the candidate number 2 may be ranked 6th here and may be 5th here, candidate number 7th may be 5th here sixth year, this may be seventh year say, this may be seventh year, maybe this is eighth, this could be eighth year, this could be ninth year, maybe this is ninth, this means tenth, this is tenth. 